Moika Suomi. For those of you who are standing around and are wondering what to listen to, I invite you to join this hub. I'm honored to be the first of eight conversations we're going to have today about the emerging markets and technology. Two days ago, the world population hit eight billion people. It's an incredible number. But if you walk around this conference today, you will see that most of the companies you meet are trying to fix problems for the very top tier of that eight billion people. Actually, if I push you harder, I'll tell you something that will sit hard on all of our brains. Close to 50% of that eight billion people live under $5 a day. And what we're building at Jabu is a revolutionizing marketplace and an iconic brand that's going to help uplift the emerging markets. About eight years ago, I'm originally from Venezuela, and I grew up in the United States. And about eight years ago, I moved to a country in southern Africa called Namibia. Namibia is about 32 years since independence. I moved to a really small town in the very north of Namibia called Grootfontein, and then I went even further and I started building housing, housing and schools and clinics. And my dream was that I wanted to bring sustainable housing opportunities and scale that across the region. I soon found that construction is really hard to scale. But something happened to me in 2017 that changed my life. I met this woman, Inge Shatona Shekupe. In that point that you see on my Google map, in a town of Ruacana, right at the border between Namibia and Angola. Inge came to me with the equivalent of 200 US dollars and said, Tate David, I actually want to buy 20 bags of cement from you. Now this woman ran that little shop in that little town, and my brother and I were the first builders to build housing there. Supermarkets came after us, banks came after us. I was shocked that a woman that sold onions for less than five cents of a US dollar came up to me with 200 US dollars, cash, ready to buy 20 bags of cement. So I said, sure, I'll sell them to you from our depot, but I want to know where you want me to bring that cement, so I'll bring it for free. And she took me, forget the pictures on the right, she took me to that part on the left, to an informal sector in the very north, in the middle of nowhere, there's 2,000 people in this town. And this lady made about $100 revenue every month. She had built 30,000 cement bricks on her own by hand over the last two years. And here I was with this massive dream that I'm going to go build housing. She's showing me off with tiny to no income. Actually, my brother Sam had gone to China the year before, and we spent 40,000 US dollars on a brick-making machine. I was pissed when I saw that, because I thought, there's probably a competitor selling bricks that I don't even know about. And she said, no, 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 no. I made them myself with this little thing I have. Her story is an incredible story. It's an incredible story of resilience about what the merchant can do with a little shop like this to actually end up with a house like that. And that's the day we decided we're going to go build Jabu. Jabu today is the fastest growing B2B marketplace that supports these little stores all across Southern Africa. We operate in Namibia, Zambia, South Africa, with current plans expansion in Botswana and Eswatini. When we first started, no investor in this room, I can guarantee it, wanted to hear our story. Namibia has two million people. And they said to me, go build something in Nigeria or Kenya or South Africa. In less than two years, we do millions of dollars in revenue a month just in Namibia. We're backed by Tiger Global and Y Combinator and Afor Capital, and we're expanding and scaling to build a brand that comes from within. These are soccer teams inside the community. We're not building a marketplace. We're not building an e-commerce. We're building a brand inside the community that is going to guide the growth and upliftment of every single informal sector retailer. We started there in the bottom left. It wasn't even an e-commerce app. It was me with my construction truck and five amazing ladies screaming off the top of my truck, cooking oil, sugar, maize meal, who needs it? And people would come and give me a blessing and a cash payment. And I would go home with a bag full of cash and a bag full of receipts I couldn't reconcile. I never knew who I sold what to or if I even picked up the right amount of money. So tech had to come in. We built an e-commerce app. We started building now a wallet. We recently acquired a ride-hailing app, Taxi Connect. This is the first time I talk about it publicly. 
and we're going to build a super app of sorts that is going to uplift not just the merchant, but every single person they interact with. This is what we do. We digitize the orders so that I no longer have to drive around screaming, cooking oil and sugar. We optimize the shipments through a technology called JIL, Jabu Inventory, Logistics, and Labor, inside of all of our distribution centers. And we give these merchants dignity. We do same-day delivery. When I first met these merchants, not even Coca-Cola was delivering to them. Today, Coca-Cola is giving us their database of clients and saying, please deliver to them. I'm not even going to sell you on the Africa opportunity. The fact that I'm standing here at Slush and that Slush is paying attention to the for the first time to the emerging markets means that the future of this conference will include many more startups like ours that are driving the conversation about development. But this is where we are. We're in southern Africa, a land that is more beautiful than anything you can imagine, with people that are kinder than you can think, and with money that floats in places that you never thought you would invest in. We're growing and scaling at about 30% a month. Currently, in less than two years, we're running over a 24 million run rate. Our team, when I made this slide, was about 200, and I've recycled it, but it's actually 329 people from all around the world. This is the woman we're serving. Not only Inge Shatona Shekupe, but Johanna, who moved to a capital and said, I want to bring a better future for my kids, and I want to send them to university. And her shop can only look like that if there is a supply chain, an e-commerce platform, and a payments platform that's willing to support her. This is the problem we're solving. Don't get me wrong, we're not replacing anyone, we're creating something that wasn't there. The typical shop owner works out of an informal sector shop, takes a taxi to a supermarket where you buy the same products that you take home. They buy at retail prices, they drive all the way back to their shop, and they try to resell it for a margin, but guess what? to the lowest bottom part of the economy from an income level at a price much higher than you pay at your convenience store. We're solving that by bringing an everyday supply chain. Think of sorts of an Amazon, but for informal sector shops that you can actually trust and depend on. We have another side to our business that I don't often talk about in public, but we cannot do without. We have to engage the brands. Most of the companies we talk to come to us and say, we're already doing it. We sell to supermarkets, supermarkets sell to them. We're not replacing the supply chain through supermarkets. We're expanding it. If Joanna's shop runs out of sugar, she's waiting a week before she can go back to use money to buy that again. So we have an engagement platform with the brands where they can see not only all the trucks that they are distributing with, but every KPI you can dream of about how this sector is revolutionizing their actual supply chain. Recently, we've launched the Jabu Academy. We realized very early on we cannot do this unless we're growing our team from inside out, and the academy makes sure that even if you did not study accounting, you can dream for a future working in our business inside that sector. When I said we work inside the community, I mean it. I am a Venezuelan Jew whose parents are from Morocco that doesn't fit into Namibia, Zambia, or South Africa. But every single person you see there is a community member who we engage and explain the mission of what we're trying to build. Before we penetrate a community, it's not my face that's talking to them. It's the same merchants that are going around self-mapping, self-digitizing, and self-engaging to start ordering. We measure everything, how many items we sell, how our basket size is improving. Women drive our biggest truck, and retailers are now starting to use technology to drive the future of their businesses. Now, I told you we pick up millions of dollars in cash. So if you want to hear more, we're looking to hire, and that's one of the things I'm most excited about here, to get you to engage with the emerging market at a personal level. The amount of skill sets in this room trying to solve problems that are not having even as close an impact as what we experience every day, I invite you to come build our wallet. We're actually starting to digitize millions of dollars in payments every day. That's our headquarter in Namibia, a beautiful workspace. That's the face of the hundreds of thousands of merchants that we're going to go serve these are our operations in Zambia, and that's the ecosystem we're going to build as we scale our super app to empower thousands of retailers in Southern Africa. Thank you very much.